Okay, where we left off, we were playing with some of the different brush options within PhotoP. And these are called brush presets. And you'll notice that some of the presets, they will all allow you to play with the size. And the largest they get is about a thousand pixels. But they won't allow you to play with the hardness, whether it's hard or soft, because those brushes have softness and hardness already built into them. So that's not something that can be adjusted. You see that little kind of very subtle splatter that comes out from this. So this is kind of a wet brush, this preset I'm using. And then this one is more of like a splatter brush. I can't control the hardness. It's built into it. Good for texturing. But notice that when I draw with it, like click and drag, it's taking quite a bit of processing. I might have to shrink this to 8 by 10. But you see how it's always at the same angle? So you lose all of that individuality that you get from just hitting it once. So how can we mess with that? Go back a few steps. So these are the brush presets. Choose if you want kind of an open brush or a wet, a wet brush or something in between like this one, right? And then you're going to play with the brush settings. You can find it under window, just under brush, or you can find it on the sidebar here, these brush settings. These are how we customize our brush. And it gives you a little example of a swatch of that brush. So let's see if that's kind of true. So this brush already has built into it a little bit of variation. This one does, but I can change that. The one I like to change the most is angle. So you can get a little bit more randomness from it. And size. But I like a brush that has soft edges so that then when you use it at a different opacity, it can blend. Now the last setting is, uh, well, the roundness. And we want that roundness, otherwise it's, it's just kind of a flat ribbon for this brush. And then spacing. And you can kind of make any brush into kind of a sputtering airbrush if you want, where it only makes a mark every, every so often. <laughs> but I tend to like very little spacing, because I want, especially in the beginning, to really build up the paint. Okay, so those are the scatter dynamics. You can actually make this into spray paint and have it cover a lot more space by scattering the brush stroke. And jitter just means that it will be random. So the more jitter you put in, the more random it will be. I'm just going to put a little bit. Is there a way to clear your whole canvas at once? Yeah, you just do Command A and then Delete. That will select all and then delete. So playing with these, I especially like playing with the tip dynamics, the size jitter, the angle jitter in particular, the minimal roundness, the roundness jitter. So sometimes it's a little bit different. This will all, all make a difference to your tool and how it performs for you. Right Now the one thing I can't do without a tablet is get this to be pressure sensitive, right? Or opacity sensitive. Because I don't have, I'm using a trackpad that doesn't have that touch sensitivity. But if you do have a tablet, you can try that. 
but I'm going to show you how I can do a lot of this without the tablet. So I'm going to so I'm going to clear all this mess from my um, figuring out a brush on my sketch layer. Just select all of it and delete. And now I'm going to start with the speed painting, just the blocking it in. So to do that, I want to fit the whole thing on the screen, the whole canvas. So I do that with Command-0, or if you're on a PC, Control-0. And that will fit the whole thing there. Then I want to be just on the brush tool. And I want to have the brush I selected with the brush settings that I like. Right. So this is my brush. It has a little bit of variety to it. Okay, now I'm going to stay on the brush tool, but I'm going to steal colors from my reference just to get started. Whoops, didn't want to do that. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to steal colors from my reference without having to change to the eyedropper tool. So to do that, when you're on the brush tool, you just hold down Option. And then I can steal a color. Then I can paint with it. And this is called shape painting. I'm not trying to draw my, my image. I'm just trying to build it up with loose shapes, stealing colors from it. Aren't these references too small to look at because you can't see all the details? Right now, I don't want details. I just want colors and just the overall impression of the, of the shape, right? I'm like making a big puddle of my subject that then I can get detailed on. The rule for digital painting is you work um, from the basic to the specific. So it would be really dumb of me to try to paint my eyes accurately right now because I don't even know where they're going to go. But I can give myself a little bit of a direction just by putting in this kind of soft smudge of color. But my main goal is to get rid of these whites, like to fill in the white space with something else. In traditional painting, you can think of this as toning your paper, right? Instead of just starting with white paper, in a lot of traditional oil painting, you would um, take an earth tone like burnt umber or raw umber or burnt sienna, and you would just like thin it out with turpentine and then scrub it all over that white canvas. And then you would use those earth tones to scumble in, you know, a rough shape of the thing you're painting, whether it's a portrait, whether it's an animal, whether it's a still life, whether it's a landscape. Now notice I'm working at 100% opacity. So anything I paint, even though the edges are soft and, and mixed together, anything I paint overtakes what's already there. So the only thing I'm really trying to do is block in where the whites are. And if I want to paint with white, I can just click on white <laughs> with option and steal a white color. So that's my painting. So at about this step, this is when I realize it's going to help me to have a toned background rather than this white background. And so this is where I'll make a new layer. And I'm going to fill it with middle gray. So I say edit fill gray at 100%. Right now it's over the top of everything. I want to bring that underneath my sketch and underneath my references. And you can see that I have now a lot to build. That's the white I painted in. But that also shows me the, the soft edges of this brush. Oop. Now I just made a mistake. Common mistake. I accidentally painted onto my gray layer. 
So how can I prevent that from happening? I go back in time before I did that so that my gray layer is clean. And then I'm going to lock that gray layer, just like I did with the blank white layer, so that I can only paint on my sketch layer. And this is just my, my shape blocking sketch. It's like speed painting. You're just trying to get it in there as quickly as you can with the tools. And I'm just stealing color right from my reference. Sometimes the color is right, sometimes it's wrong. Now, notice I haven't changed the size of my brush at all. And I want you to keep your brush pretty large for this and at 100% opacity. Because it's about filling in the space. It's not about getting your details right. And I might steal some color and some shapes from my secondary reference too. Those are a lot darker. These these greens, this lighting, pretty different. And you see how my, my sketch is kind of growing and I'm figuring out, kind of smudging the paint around how wide it's going to get, how much of the space it's going to take up. But it's very important that for your sketch layer, you work at 100% opacity whether you're using a hard edge brush or a soft edge brush. What I don't want you to do is to start zooming in on a detail like the eye and deciding where it should go. You know, I'm just blocking it in, trying different things out. And because I'm at a 100% opacity, whenever I paint something, I can then carve around it and kind of restate about, it. Uh -huh, go ahead. If like, um, like if the drawing's not symmetrical, like if like when you're doing a face, like to get all the features in the right places. Mm -hmm. What about when you're done blocking in your general colors when you're trying to make it precise? Or is that why we're working in larger areas? Well, yeah, you want to work as large as you can, and you know your your skill at at rendering and matching the way something looks, you know, just develops with practice. But we can use some digital tricks in the next phase to get it posed the way we want and positioned. And if things aren't symmetrical, we can use some of our compositing skills just on our own paint strokes to even things out. So I'll be showing that. Right now I'm just trying to get that, that full kind of silhouette put down. Now, what is a little frustrating to me, because I, I have used tablets in the past and I use Photoshop instead of this browser-based program, is just how slow the brush moves, right? But that's okay. You want to get used to your tool and keep it pretty simple for digital painting so that you can be deliberate with it. And it's actually good, in my opinion, if at this step you're, you're working with a brush that's a little bit bigger than is comfortable. Especially because it, without a tablet, it doesn't taper out for me. But I'm finding my way here. I'm getting, getting the placement. Remember, this is your painting. This isn't you trying to do a version of the photograph. And we're trying to figure out our own way of using these tools. It's not about making it look like mine or making it look.